Hello everybody, and welcome to a very early Let's Play of Warlock 2 The Exiled. Warlock 2 The Exiled is a 4X game created by Paradox Entertainment, or Paradox Interactive rather, and is a sequel to, obviously, Warlock 1, which was Warlock Masters of the Arcane. If you've never played a Warlock game before, or uh, have never touched part of the Warlock series, which was the first game and now Warlock 2, uh, like I said, it's a 4X game. There are a lot of similarities between this and Civilization, um, but there is quite a lot of differences as well, which we're going to take a look at as we play. Now, like I said, this is a very early Let's Play, and I say early because this is a week before it's even available on early access for all the pre-orders. So, uh, thank you very much to Paradox Interactive for letting me take a look at the game and uh, showing it to you guys to see if this is something you're interested in. And if you're part of my channel, I wholly suspect that you might have some interest in this game. Uh, even though this is maybe not be directly related to any survival games, which is what my channel is focused on, um, I have a deep interest in strategy games in general, and if you follow me on Twitch, you should know that just by my name. On Twitch, my name is Mathis Starcraft. I have a heavy interest in a lot of strategy games, and obviously I do have the Paradox Mini Campaign going on in my channel right now. This is not going to be a review, this is not going to be a, a snapshot or an early uh, or an impressions video. This is straight up going to be a little bit of a let's play. We're looking at maybe around 10 videos, depending on how long it takes me and how much progress we get done, just to show the game off to you guys and why I'm having such a good time with it. I've put a few hours into it, so I have some of the basics down so I don't walk in completely blind, but there's still going to be quite a lot new to me. And if you're familiar with games like Civilization, um, you're going to be interested in seeing what the differences are and why this game is something you're probably going to want to check out. Now, if you have it pre-ordered, you're going to be having access to the very similar version that I have access to in about a week. Um, this is pretty close to, I think, what the final version is going to look like. My assumption is that there's going to be some patches to fix some balancing and bugs if there are many along the way. But without further ado, let's hit single player, let's start a brand new game, and let's jump in. So. There are two modes. There's Exile Mode and Sandbox Mode. Sandbox Mode is your typical big piece of land, big country with a couple continents, you versus other AI, and multiple ways to win. Um, defeating the Great Mages, defeating an Avatar, casting the Unity Spell, and capturing Holy Grounds. Those are the four ways to win in Sandbox, but we're not going to touch Sandbox. We're actually going to play Exiled Mode, because this is the new mode that is um, new to Warlock 2, that was not in Warlock 1. And there's a couple of ways to win the Exiled Mode. One is to defeat all the great mages, and one is to defeat the united one. Um, we're just going to leave those on, and then the other ones that we can touch is defeat an avatar and to capture the holy grounds. Uh, but for the sake of this let's play, we're going to just do straight up defeat the great mages and defeat the united one and move on. These are all the difficulty modes. I will say one of the things I really like is just the aesthetic of the game. It's kind of got this cool um, fantasy punk, I think is a way to look at it with these like uh, kind of you know contraptions in the middle. But we have relaxed casual, normal, challenging, and, and hardcore, or impossible rather. I'm going to stick with normal because, again, there's still a lot that I'm exploring and learning as I play. Like I said, I put time into it, but not nearly enough to play on super hard. If you want to see a super hard playthrough, I'm sure you can find some on YouTube. Uh, we can go ahead and hit next. Uh, this is our world configuration. We can basically choose the sizes of the world. Um, we're going to go ahead and stay with normal, but the larger the size, the more grand mages or rival mages you can have. We're going to stick with a medium-sized world with two grand rival mages, um, or two great mages that we're going to be fighting against, so that's easy enough. And then we're going to go ahead and hit next, and this is our character select. Now this is important. A lot like um, in stuff like Civilization, you're going to have to pick a character that comes with certain traits and stuff. But the difference is, is imagine if you gave, say, Gandhi, for instance, um, you know, magic spells to cast. That's what it's like to pick a character. Uh, you, the characters not only have, you know, their typical perks, of which you can customize, by the way, which we're going to take a look at, but they come with spells, and you as a character basically are this character, you're playing as this character, and they have magical spells that they can, they can cast on enemy units, on terrain, on friendly units to buff them, all kinds of cool stuff to kind of hedge combat in their favor if they're given the opportunity. And we're going to take a look at that, but first we're going to take a look at the characters. So we have Moralbus the Hat, which is the guy that they give you Im immediately. Um, Anna the Benign, which is not a name I would want. Rizka, uh, well that's kind of cool looking dude. Um, Dragon Queen, Zara, Krell the Kingpin, all of which have backstories and come with their own perks and stuff. Uh, King Lich the Sixth, which is awesome. Aberon the, the Light, Neferati, or Nefertari, um, Talosian. King Rat, the 14th, that's awesome. Uh, first Rune Witch, S. Caliborn, he's a cool looking dude, he's like a statue or something. 
which I think I just saw, King in Stone, yep. Uh, Malachur and Moralbus the Hat. So we have all these characters. I'm actually going to pick uh, King Lich. I like it. He's going to be playing as the Undead, which we can customize. We're going to customize him completely, though. And we're going to go ahead and hit Reset. And this is how you pick your perk. So it's a point buy system. You start with 10 points, and each spell and perk you pick costs certain points. For instance, if we wanted to pick Academic, it's going to give us a, an extra 20% to our production cost, uh, our, our production speed, rather. Uh, but it's going to cost us half of our points. Essentially, you look and go, okay, well, this is really effing good. At the same time, it's going to cost us a lot of points. It's balanced in that way. There might be some changes between this version and the final release when we when we start um, doing to just for balance changes. But other than that, so let's take a look. We've got let's go through all the perks and then we'll make some decisions. So we got academic production cost twenty percent, charismatic unrest per turn. Unrest is a something a thing that's new to Warlock two. I never really played a lot of Warlock one, um, where your cities become unruly. For a while and eventually you're gonna have to let them go which we'll talk about in a little bit farmer food production instructor um experience per turn which is good for your units they do level up uh Coatles training uh that's kind of cool extra melee and missile uh, resistance magnate we get plus 10 money production that's actually interesting elven relatives El we get an elven rilla village so very similar to how civilization works there are going to be resources on hex tiles near you um and they can be anything from villages to pumpkin patches to all kinds of stuff. This is an elven village, it's essentially equivalent to a resource. And we can build special buildings on these resources. Treasury, uh, we just start with an extra 100 gold. That's only one point, and the reason it's so cheap is because you're going to blow through that money very quickly. It's maybe just something kind of throw your last point in. Archon, optimal number of cities plus two. So this is, this is something we want to talk about real quick. In Warlock, unlike something like Civilization, there is a maximum number of optimal cities you can have, and I think it starts at 5. Um, and the way optimal cities work is if you cross over the number of optimal cities you have, you start taking massive penalties. And you might be going, well, what the hell, that sounds really stupid, they're going to handicap you? Well, there's a cool special feature in Warlock that is not in other games. Once you reach your optimal cities and you want to start expanding outside of your normal reach just to kind of keep going, or maybe you have a really good offensive point with a couple of your cities, and you, you need maybe a third city to really ensure that you're going to have this enemy locked down with this great strategic placement of your cities, but you need to, it's going to bring you over your optimal city number, what you can do is take one of maybe your less useful cities and turn them into a special city. And by that I mean you can turn it into a religious holy site, or you can turn it into maybe like a giant marketplace or something. I think that's an option, I might be wrong there. Essentially you turn the city into something that you can't produce units from or build buildings from anymore, but is still useful to you and is still part of your territory. So I like that a lot. And what Archon is going to do is allow you to have two more to your optimal cities, which is actually pretty damn powerful if I do say so myself. Archmage, extra casting speed, so when you cast your spells, if they take a couple turns to cast, we can reduce that by 20%. Conjure, extra mana production. Glorious Tactician, our units gain 10% more power, which is really good. Lord of Coatles, we get a Coatle Village resource. Trader, extra money production. Researcher, extra research production. Elven Followers, which is, I'm assuming, allows us to build Elven Archers. And Mana Vault, it's an uh, extra 100 mana to start. Alright, right away I'm going to go ahead and spend 4 points on Trader. I think that's what I want to do. And then, I'm thinking we take Archon for the extra production. Now we're going to have only 2 points left, and what we're going to do is not build and take any more perks, we're going to go over to Spells, and this is important. So. You also get to pick spells as well, and you get to spend the same pool. And like I said, your character comes with spells. And these are the starting spells you can choose from, and they give you a nice foot in the door towards spell research, because in the game there is spell research. In order to get to higher level spells, you need the lower level spells first. And obviously the, the higher up you are in that tree, the faster you get to the more powerful stuff. We're going to go ahead and, and only spend a little bit on um, some of the beginner spells so we can get a, get our foot in the door for spell research and then move on further than that. But let's go through the spells that we can start with so you get an idea. Uh, for six points, we can take Favor of Agrella. Um, it gives God's Relation plus 30 to Agrella. There is relation to the gods and if you want the God's Favor to give you bonuses and stuff. I haven't really searched that far into the game yet, um, but I'm assuming I will try to do so in this series. 
So we have Favor of Agrella, Favor of Fervus. These are all favors of the gods and what they do, uh, which is kind of cool. Like Favor of Crypta is, um, let's see, costs 14 mana to cost and heals 8 death magic. Since we're going to be playing as undead, death magic is really important. So Crypta might be a god we're looking to get in favor with early on. So that's useful. Um, basic Dispel, Ice Ring. Uh, let's see, Frostbite the target. Lesser Heal, Lesser Weakness, which is good. Lesser Fireball, Lesser Shadow Bolt. Damage, 8 Death Matic. So... Alright, what I'm gonna take... You know, let's go, let's go straight up Necromancer. Let's take Lesser Shadow Bolt. It's gonna, it's, it's, it costs a little bit more mana than Fireball, but it does a little bit more damage. And if we cast it in our own territory, it only costs us 9 mana instead of 8. 18. Which is important note. So we'll go ahead and take that for 1. And we'll take, um, we can't really do, I don't think we can heal our own. Yeah, so he doesn't heal undead in buildings. So we don't want, like, any life magic is bad for undead units. So we'll go ahead and take weakness. Uh, they use, the unit loses some of its power. So weakness might be good, like a little bit of a debuff. And that'll, ca that'll cost us everything. We can pick a new color for our character. Um, let's go with red, because we're evil. And we're gonna, we can change our units, by the way, if we don't want to play as undead, I mean, we just want to play as this guy, but not the undead, we can shake, take a the Elves, Humans, Monsters, Plane Striders, Svarts, and Undead. But we're going to stick with the undead. And uh, let's go ahead and load up. So, the difference between Exiled Mode and Sandbox Mode, as far as the world is concerned, is actually quite significant. In Sandbox Mode, it's your typical big world with continents and oceans uh, separating it all. But in Exiled Mode, the world is separated into multiple planes and it is completely fractured. The story in Exile Mode, which is kind of story mode-ish, is that the world was completely destroyed and shattered into multiple dimensions and we are trying to kind of bring it back together. And each little island is um, basically kind of self-contained and that's something that's really important. Um, we can actually take a look at the map of the world, which is right here. So, uh, here we are on the Red Valley. And here are the rest of the worlds. It's, it's a medium-sized world, so we have a couple of other things. Uh, world of the United One, if we want to go win by killing the United One, we have to go here. Mirror World at Inidria. Uh, I don't know what the Mirror World is. That's interesting, but hopefully we'll learn. And then we have all these unknown worlds, which we will get to via gateways on our current one. So the world we're on right now is a Great Plains, um, a Great Land. Uh, we have two units on it, which is our starting units in one city. Your capitals in this world is nothing else of interest. We have our skeletal warriors and archers. We can take a look at our cities from here and our resources from here. Iron and pumpkins, it's good. And uh, the world size of where we are is tiny. So there's a 100% a, a chance, I'd say, that we are the only other great mage on this island. There, The others are out there somewhere. Um, so we can go ahead and take a look at all these hexes, as you would expect in a game like this, are going to produce things. So um, these are withering plains. And they are just no bonus and no penalty. We have a market right here, which is going to cost us, uh, which I assume helps us out. A graveyard, which I assume just helps us build units. And um, it looks like a mana trap is on here, which is good. That'll help us gain mana. Over here, we have living planes. Heals units per HP. Damage to undead units per HP. So this is really bad for us. It damages unde damage to undead units per turn is two life magic, and we are actually have one in our territory. So that's actually going to be a problem. We're going to want to get our undead units off that immediately. So we're going to go ahead and work on doing that um, pretty quickly. But we're going to do a couple of, of just general things first. Uh, for one, we need to research a spell. We need to get our spell researched going. And what we have over here is what we've got. So we already have some stuff in sorcery. Uh, there's wizardry, divine spells, and sorcery. Uh, we can go ahead and take a look at um, sorcery stuff. You go further down the land, you know, the landscape, and it tells you what you want. Uh, it's just, it's essentially just a research tree. The further down, the better it is, and there's a lot, a lot, a lot of customization and a whole lot of spells to choose from. But for now, let's take a look. We want to go towards maybe Shadow Bolt. Uh, Shadow Bolt is a lot of damage, and that's pretty cool. Uh, we have Lesser Heal over here in Sorcery, which is interesting, or Reconstruction. Friendly, non-living unit, undead, and building. So, this is actually, Lesser Reconstruction is going to be good. This is going to be our heal spell. Restore some health to a friendly, non-living unit. So, undead and buildings. We already have Shadow Bolt. So, let's go ahead and choose Lesser Re Reconstruction as our research. It's going to take six turns to research, and we'll have it. Um, we're also going to want to construct a building. So, we can do uh, Mana Farm, 
which is required for a mana vault, which we can build right now, which is going to give us four mana per turn, which is up here. We're currently um, gaining one mana per turn. We have minus two for our army upkeep and plus three from the city. So currently we only are we're gaining one, so we might want more mana. Uh, Food-wise, we are converted to city of Bromberg. We're gaining five food, and that's getting turned into gold. Now I'm curious, do we need food because we're undead? It's converting food into to money. I'm curious if we need it. Uh, let's see. We're also gaining money, eight gold um, from the city. Minus two for the army upkeep, but two gold, two and a half gold from food alone. So it looks like it's a 50% uh, trans transformation from food to gold. Interesting. All right. We could right now, uh, we can pop this open and take a look at our building tree. We have a market, so that's going to lead over. And this is going to look a little familiar if you play civilization games, obviously. Um, I don't know if I like this screen. It's a little bit unfriendly or unintuitive looking. Uh, I don't like the fact that I have to scroll over with the arrows, but it's fine. So we have a market already, which is producing us some some money, which is good. We could cr create a bat fort, uh, which is going to be give us green bats, black shadows, and, a, and allows us for uh, to build a tax office. Or we can create uh, a craftsman's district, which is going to give us some money. And then the tax office itself is going to give us production of extra money and give us a bank and a vampire mansion. Wow, that's kind of cool. Uh, right now we already have the mana trap, which is going to give us more money, but it takes some money for upkeep. But we also have a graveyard, which is going to give us a bunch of options for, um, some, some different types of units, obviously. And we could go with the mana farm, too, if we really wanted one. We could get a farm as well, which I don't think we really need right now. And then a bunch of other stuff that we don't have, that we don't have the opportunity to do. So I think we're going to go with... Right now, I think we're going to go ahead, because we, we have a lot of options as far as units are concerned. Let's go ahead and build a mana farm for now, and then we'll maybe go for a bat fort. Now, unlike civilization, um, city building is going to be a little bit more strategic in that every building requires a hex tile to build on. So right now we only have three open hexes, but we can only have three buildings, so we need to be smart on what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and build a mana farm for more mana, since we're already losing... Um, we're already losing, you know, a bunch of mana from army upkeep. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of uh, some mana management. Let's go ahead and build it right over. It doesn't really matter, I guess, right now, because we have the three spaces we have are not producing anything. So we'll go ahead and build that, and that'll be our building for the for the day. And let's also get some archers being built right now. We can get warriors or archers. Let's go ahead and spend 30 gold and get a cup an archer being built up right now. So close our city view, and now we're going to move our units out of here. Let's see. Now we want to just start doing some ex exploration around. See what we can do. See what we can find. So let's move our archers out of this little area because that's a problem. Nothing over here. We do have a pumpkin patch. Troll on the bridge. So this is something unique to Warlock as well. Every once in a while a quest will pop up and we need to see what it is and we have choices. So a big troll is blocking entrance to the bridge and demands gold in exchange for passage. And it looks like he's blocking the way to the mystical portal. So we can fulfill his demands which unfortunately we can't do because we don't have the money. We can give him illusory gold. Give him some illusory gold. Um, there's a chance, 30% chance the monster has taken the gold and stepped aside, leaving the path clear. Or 70% chance we put the troll into rage mode. Um, what? Shoo it off. The troll just rages. Or postpone. Not now. This quest will be postponed until you activate it again. We could take the risk and um, spend... It looks like 25 mana to give him a, a we're basically spending 25 mana for a 30% chance. You know, we'll postpone it for now. We'll come back. So that's actually imp important. But the mystical portal is actually really close to us. Which is, uh, which is actually a good thing. Alright, so that's going to be that. That's the only movement we're going to have here. Let's explore a little bit north and see what uh, what's up here with our skeleton warriors. And it looks like that's all they're going to be able to move this turn. And yes, we can build a new unit, I know. And we'll go ahead and end the turn. Your Highness, there are many bridges that connect worlds together. You can use one of them to visit another world. Yes, we accept that. Uh, he postponed, not now. We will take care of that another turn. Alright, let's keep exploring, maybe up north a bit. Let's take our skeleton archers north and explore. Now you're going to see the edges of this, of this little island very quickly. We found a lost caravan. That's good. The lost caravan is going to have, hopefully, some money. And it looks like there's a, a, 
a den of wolves actually not too far either. There's one right here too. We're going to keep our men in the, in the forest for the defensive bonus that it's going to provide us and hope the wolves don't cause too much of a problem. We're going to go ahead and set that up to have them move to the abandoned caravan next turn. Oh, looks like the wolves are going to attack us. Luckily, we did a good amount of damage. So we'll go ahead and um, move them to the abandoned caravan. We gain, earned 50 gold. And then we should be able to shoot these wolves from a distance because of the archers. They can uh, fire two away, and we were able to take them out. Now, it does look like we are going to be... I would like to move these guys up closer. Certain special effects can be constructed on this resource. So this is iron. Um, oh, and you can see our city borders did end up expanding. The shitty part is that we actually have these living plains in here, which is a problem. This would be good if we were not undead. But our borders did end up expanding, um, which is good. Here's our unrest, by the way. We have no, no unrest happening. We have more archers, which I'm going to go ahead and start moving them up a bit. Still building our mana tap. Can't really do much. We'll get ready to fight these guys. And um, we'll wait there. These guys are level one. Once they level up, we can actually we can actually attack them. Let's see. Uh, we're going to get minus 25% because they're in the forest. They're foresters and they're on guard. So we have a huge penalty to attacking into them. We're not going to do that. We'll get ready to move our men closer, though. Once we get them in close, we'll be able to do offer some sort of defense. And we do have a new unit. Uh, a new unit is avail available, Skeleton Settlers. So we're going to go to the city and we can build some settlers. So we're going to go ahead and actually get a settler running right away. We want to expand to the new land as quickly as we can. We're losing a mana per turn now because of the army upkeep. So this mana, tra this mana farm is going to be very good to us soon. So they're going to attack into us, which is exactly what I was hoping for. Now we're going to go ahead and move these archers in close and start firing from a distance. And hopefully take them out mostly. We'll move these archers uh, a good distance close. What is that noise? That is like the goofiest sounding thing of all time. And now that the wolf's den is done, we can go ahead and loot it. And we're going to get 40 gold out of it, which is excellent. Uh, we'll move up one more, do a little bit of exploration. And it looks like we have another wolf's den. We're going to try and take care of the threats of this little island before we worry about expanding too much. Uh, let's go ahead and build another building as well. We can do that. Um, so we have a mana vault right now, which is extra mana, but it's going to cost us three gold upkeep, which we can afford. Mana is going to be very important. We can do a shrine to Chrome and a shrine to Crypta. Now, a shrine to Crypta is going to be very good for us because of it's going to give us our uh, plus five um, relations with Crypta, and Crypta is going to be somebody we want to focus on because we have undead. But let's go to the buildings here and take a look a little bit. So we want the, I think Bat Fort might be really good for us. It really might be. Food. Harbor. We could build a harbor on some water, but there's no real need to do that yet. Magic Tower. Um, it's going to give us an, a further attack range for our city, I'm pretty sure. But we don't really need that. We're actually pretty good. Shrine to Crypta. Demolishing will harm relations with the god. Maybe we don't want to do a Shrine to Crypta just yet. I'm thinking we're going to go basics still. We also want to get some of our basics up, and I think a bat fort is going to be really important to us. So let's get a bat fort up and running from different unit types. Let's go ahead and build it right on the plains. Um, and we're making, we're actually doing well as far as mana is concerned. And I, we're building a archer right now. I mean a settler. And I'm also, this is our mana farm. I like the way some of the buildings look, by the way. It's kind of cool looking. This fucking living plains is like the worst luck in the world, though. We'll end our turn. Now, the wolves could come out and try and attack us. It doesn't look like they're going to, though. We're going to move these guys up and hopefully do some attacking from a distance. They can't really do much about it. I think that twanging noise was just like we're in a bad spot to actually do any attacking. Can we attack from here? I don't think we can. We'll move here. Target is on guard, so we'll have a minus 34% per uh, minus 34 chance, and they have a plus 25% chance because they're foresters. So we don't want to do that. We are going to go ahead and leave them there and end our turn. They're going to move into us. Uh, that's actually good that they moved into us. 
And we do have our settlers done, but before we worry about that, we're gonna go ahead and do some damage, hopefully. Whoa! Oh, they're dead. Never mind. I didn't realize we killed them. So we got um, 40 gold from that, and we'll move up a little bit and just see if we can see the extents of this area. If we can get a full view on everything, I'll be very happy. Let's move these guys uh, home. We might have to try the illusory gold trick. I don't know if I want to pay him as much money as he's asking for. And this guy, we can just go ahead and... Um, do any nothing else. Let's go ahead and um, build another unit, I think. Let's go ahead and build another skeletal warrior. We have the mana and the, up, the money to, to kind of keep them going. And maybe we can make use of this iron soon, too. And we'll go ahead and hit enter to end our turn. And we leveled up! So, the when new you... spell research is complete. And we got a spell done being researched, which is great. We'll take a look at how to cast spells here in a minute for you guys, because I forgot I haven't shown that to you. Uh, so when a level, unit levels up, we can click level up, and there's perks you can pick. So more damage for missiles, more resistance to missiles, and defense bonus on rugged terrain. Because we don't know what the next land is going to be when we go through that gate, let's take a general bonus for ourselves. 20%. That way, if we go into the next gate and it's like a desert and there's no rough terrain, we won't go, oh shit, that was a bad upgrade for us. Now we're going to head over to that troll and see if we can take care of him. We're gonna go ahead, I think we'll be alright for the most part. Let's start moving him over. Alright. And we're gonna go ahead and get ready to start moving this guy out. Our settler. That's our settler. I like how he carries a caravan all around. So research is complete. Uh, we can go ahead and close. We need to research a new spell. We can go Shadow Bolt, which I think we're gonna go for. Very early Shadow Bolt. Massive offensive ability. Now, if we want to cast a spell, this is how we do We open up our spell book. We can take a look at all the spells we can cast, which um, is not much. We have Weakness, Shadow Bolt, and uh, we have ourselves this minor reconstruction here. What? All right. I'm oh, sorry. I was just reading it a little bit. Um, and if you cast it, you click on it to cast it. Certain ones cost certain times. The more the ring, the longer it's going to take. So this one right here takes a full turn to cast, full turn to cast, and this one right here is um, is just three quarters of a turn to cast. And I am getting bombarded on my phone right now. All right, let's uh, let's click this, and uh, now we can create a new unit, which is great. And the new unit is going to be the bats. So we can take a look at the bats themselves. We can hover over them. Hey, look. They have, um, like a fly for flying, which is good. And, let's see, they cost, it takes two turns, they're 20 gold, which is actually kind of cheap. And they can, they're both, mostly used as a scout, it looks like. But these things actually make use of this, actually. They're, they're, um, yeah, they're living, so they can actually make use of this little area over here. Cool, alright. We can end our turn. And it's our turn now, so let's start moving our dudes towards the troll and see if we can activate the troll again. Fulfills demands. Let's try to create some illusory gold. All right, he has taken the illusory gold at the sp at the expense of our mana and uh, has stepped aside. Awesome. So now we can go through there. Um, obviously, before we go through there, let's go through. Um, let's try to get as people as close as possible. And our settlers can go through, but I don't want our settlers to be the first ones through. I want our army to be the first ones through. Just to make sure it's safe. Who needs orders? Oh, we built, oh yeah, we built, uh, these warriors. So we'll go ahead and get them nice and close. And hit and turn. Alright, let's send them through. So we're gonna go through this gate. Ooh, there's actually a neutral unit over there. But yes, we'll go through. And we get 20 mana for it. Um, thank you very much. And that was complete of a quest. And we're in the Dead Plains. Interesting. This could be very good for my army. We have to be very careful exploring, though, because we don't know what's out there. But I think this is going to be a good part to cut this episode. Make sure you come back tomorrow for more Warlock. We'll be playing this for the week and maybe a little bit longer if you guys really like it. Um, this is a a new thing where obviously 
since it's a new series, I would love to hear your thoughts on it in the comments section. Let me know if you want to see a lot more. Uh, I will definitely be continuing to play it, though, for a little while. And if you are enjoying it, well, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.